hour of sleep. We have small children, so we did not. Um, someday, not a bit. someday we will get our extra hour of sleep again. Um, let us know that you're here either uh, through a QR code on the back or on a, the connection card. You can put those in the offering basket a little bit later in the service. Um, we, again, we are glad to be back. I have been gone for two weeks, and so I'm just like, do I remember how to do this? Hopefully I do. Um, but all that being said, there are a lot of bugs going around this time of year. Uh, so we will miss you when you're not here and feeling ill. We do not miss your germs. Masks of all kinds are great. If you do want to come, we love masks but we're not going to require it if you're feeling well. So there's that. Uh, Jared has a few announcements. Uh, oh, sorry, last thing. Or nope, just kidding, that's you. Yes, uh, we have a lot going on to remind you of and to make sure that you know about. Uh, one is that today is our Commitment Sunday, so we'll be collecting pledge cards. Um, if you are planning to make a pledge, now is the, the day that we will gather those. Uh, there's extra ones, I believe, in the back. A uh, number of things going on next week. Uh, tomorrow evening, our affirming LGBTQ plus group will be meeting. Uh, you can contact the office if you need more information about that. We also have our, um, what we call our young adults group, that's uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, um, or whosoever uh, identifies with, with that group. And that um, group will meet on the 7th from 6 to 8, uh, meeting here this time. Next Saturday, uh, we will once again uh, be offering hospitality at the conclusion of the Veterans Day Parade. Um, we, we have a full first shift for that, but we're still looking for some uh, volunteers uh, to be there from about 11.30 to 1.30. If you're interested to help out with that, there is a sign-up sheet on the uh, rolling cart, again, out in the foyer. Care support group, um, this upcoming? Yes. Uh, care support group meets this upcoming Saturday at 10. Yes. Because of the parade. Uh, because of the uh, parade. <clears throat> next Sunday, um, next Sunday, Allison and I are traveling but you will be in good hands with the Reverend uh, Bruce and Helen Irvin, who happen to be Allison's mom and uh, stepdad. So we're very, very grateful to them um, doing a heavy lift this upcoming uh, week and weekend, both uh, watching boys while we're away and also being here um, to share their um, gifts with you all as worship leadership. Uh, Don Sparks will also be here, Executive Director of Albany Helping Hands uh, for Moment for Mission uh, and also have a table during the uh, coffee hour uh, to meet you all and to um, collect some donations for Albany Helping Hands. 
Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a moment of contemplative silence, which will then be followed by our prelude. Am I on? I'm on now. Okay. (laughs) We remember the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. We remember the tender thoughts of loved ones, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember the supreme love of Jesus, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection shone forth in the lives of faithful disciples through the ages. Cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy.
are the beginning and the ending of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear, that death and mourning will be no more. You make your home among us. You have been our dwelling place in all generations. As we remember the saints who have gone before us, shine the light of your eternal presence on each one of us. As we give you thanks for life, encourage us to live with an awareness of your love which surrounds us. Teach us to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may truly be your people. Amen. You may be seated, and I will invite all of our uh, friends, young friends, to join us up here. be with you. When my body stops working and God brings me home to heaven, you and I can still be with each other in different ways. You can remember me when you see butterflies flying in the sky. Remember me when you laugh out loud. Remember me when you enjoy a snow cone on a hot summer day? Who loves to laugh? Who loves to eat snow cones on a hot summer day? You can remember me when you blow bubbles, when you watch fireflies light up in the summer sky. Do we have fireflies here? No, okay, so never mind. Remember me when you throw paper airplanes and when you eat strawberries and when you build sandcastles on the beach. There are so many different ways to remember people after their bodies stop working and they go and be with God. Are there other ways that you like to remember people, Bibi? When I, when BB cooks, they remember their dad. Are there any other ways that we remember people? There are a lot of different ways. We're going to remember some people who died this year by lighting some candles and saying some prayers, but we can always say, thank you, God, for the people who love us, even when they're not here anymore. All right, thank you for listening and reading. Let's stand up. And we're going to say the peace of Christ be with you. And then the grown-ups are going to say something back, okay? One, two, three. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We are invited to stand and greet one another with Christmas. <coughs>
now during this time of prayer, we'll make time to remember some of those saints of the church we know who over the course of this past year have died and gone to be with God. Would you join me now for a time of prayer and remembrance? Eternal God, make us this day to remember the unseen cloud of witnesses who compass us about. Those who in every age and generation witness to their faith in life and in death. Those who by their courage and their sacrifice won for us the freedom and the liberty in faith that we enjoy, those who serve their siblings in Christ at the cost of pain, of persecution, and of death, those for whom all the trumpets sounded as they passed over to the other side, those whom we have loved and who have gone to be with you and whose names are written on our hearts. We remember on this day, John Busick, Nita Campbell, Pam Denton, Lee Gear. Jeff Hargrove, Kent Kincaid, Linda Lees, Anne Pierce, Jan White. And I now invite you to name others who have died and gone to be with God over the course of this past year. Stacy Edwards. Steve Rubin. Harvey Miller. Dennis Campbell. <coughs> Daniel Ellsworth. Daniel Ellsworth. God, help us to walk worthily of those in whose unseen presence life is lived. Help us to have in our lives their courage and danger their steadfastness in trial, their perseverance in difficulty, their loyalty when loyalty is costly, the love which nothing can change, their joy which nothing can take away. So grant us in your good time to share with them the blessedness of your nearer presence, that we also may come to that life where all the questions are answered, where all the tears are wiped away, where all shall meet again, never to be separated from them. Those whom we have loved and lost a while, where we shall be forever with our Lord. So grant to us in this life never to forget those who have gone before so that in the life to come we may share their blessedness through Jesus Christ our Lord in whose name we pray 
with the words that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Today's scripture is Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, 
some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Thank you, Edie. And thank you all for your care and consideration as uh, we have dealt with sick children and COVID. It was our first go around. Um, would not recommend, but here we are on the other side of it. And so we are uh, very thankful for your, the cards that we have received and the prayers and the offers to help with pick up and drop off and all of that. It is good to be in this community. Now, uh, Jared has been talking about stewardship for the past couple of weeks. Uh, we've been asking about the ways you support the work of ministry here in this congregation and beyond. And after some reflection and prayer, uh, we will be receiving our pledges, our commitments for the coming year. There will be instructions a little bit later. Uh, but this, this letter, this Ephesians, um, not my favorite thing to preach on, but here we are. Um, it highlights different kinds of roles in the early church, um, stewardship of gifts and talents, not necessarily finances. Most scholars think that this uh, letter wasn't written by Paul. It is... Um, pretty sophisticated in the Greek, and can be hard to parse out in the um, passing of the piece. Edie came up to me and was like, how do I read this so it makes sense? Um, that's a great question. We just kind of have to go through it piece by piece. Um, scholars also don't think it was written to a specific community. A lot of letters that Paul writes were like, okay, here's a specific community, here's a specific problem, Here's the specific solution. This was written to be circulated to a variety of different communities uh, in the early Christian community, ancient Near East. And you know, there are a lot of analogies in this letter. A couple of weeks ago, Jared talked about us being God's handiwork, us being part of God's creative force so that we can share God's creativity with the world. This one talks about we are the body of Christ. Talks about being given different gifts for the work of the church. And the goal here in this letter is not to necessarily talk about one specific problem, but to use language to captivate and transform imagination. Inspire what could be. And that's what stewardship campaigns at their best are, are asking us to do. But they're asking us to recognize what captivates our attention and energy so that we might use our limited amount of resources, time, gifts, energy to make that happen. Stewardship campaigns remind us who we're called to be and what we're called to do. It encourages us to cultivate what we're good at and celebrate that we're good at different things. It invites us to imagine what could be all for the sake 
of justice and mercy and love because that is what we receive through Christ's life, death, and resurrection. And so we get to the scripture where this letter writer celebrates the different gifts of others, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, all of the things that, you know, we say, oh, here are the different things. And for as different as they sound, um, they're kind of the same. <laughs> apostles are meant to be messengers of good news. Prophets are interpreters and poets of good news. Evangelists are bringers of good news. Shepherd pastors are shepherds of good news. Teachers are instructors of good news. I mean, at this point, you could probably just pick one of these titles that you're like, hmm, let's try this one on and just lean into that. It begins with the need to understand that we have good news to share, that we have, that we understand what that good news is, and then a responsibility to share it with the world. And what might that good news be? Unity in Christ, so that we all may be one in our pursuits of justice, in our embodiment and the building up of compassionate community, in our spiritual practices of generosity and service. Despite messages of alienation and hostility we see in the world every day, we're also empowered to recognize and share in a vision of reconciliation, of peace, of in human unity that we have learned from the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are empowered to recognize and share that good news through our words and actions. We are empowered to recognize and share truth in love for neighbors near and far by denouncing all that would celebrate division and violence, that would lean into fear and shame, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and genocide, racism, homophobia and transphobia, ageism and sexism and more, all that seek to divide, to separate, to alienate us from the love of God. And so we are empowered to recognize good news in the lives and legacies from others who have joined the great cloud of witnesses. We read some of those names today. We spoke them out loud. And we are empowered to be saints here on earth, seeking holiness and practicing generosity and speaking the truth in love. Jared and I did not get to meet every person named this morning. But the folks that we did meet and the stories that were shared with us and the ones that I read online, I am confident that this community has been impacted because of their lives. I have been impacted because of their lives, regardless of whether or not we met. So we embody their legacies and share the good news that they shared with us when we remember and recognize how loved they were by so many. How we celebrate opportunities to serve and share when we create communities of care, when we encourage deep conversations and the exploration of big questions, when we practice generosity of time and talents, we embody their legacies and we share good news when we offer hospitality in meals meant to be shared, in homemade cinnamon rolls, in creating spaces that welcome 
and value the least, the lost, and the lonely. We recognize the many gifts we have given to communities and to others, and we recognize the many gifts that have been given to us. It's a gift to be able to celebrate and embrace curiosity as individuals and together. It's a gift to be able to receive and offer care. It is a gift to be able to share stories of God's presence in the world. It's a gift to be able to share and hear powerful witnesses to the need for love, mercy, and justice in the world. And it's a gift to be able to respond. Now, these gifts aren't always easy to receive. They might make us uncomfortable. And they're not easy calls to respond to. But they are beautiful and faithful response, responses that we offer to a people that God loves and to a world that God created and called good. Now, Silas turned four on Friday. And since it was the first Friday of the month, he got to ride the carousel as many times as, we, as he wanted. So he picked an animal. We rode. We got off. We went immediately around. He picked another animal. We rode. We got off again and again and again. Rinse and repeat. He loved it. Julian thought it was fine. Um, he's not even two yet, so I'm sure the enthusiasm will be there in a year or two. And in my many, many rides on Friday, I started to recognize names from this community. I rode Linda Lee's Lion Peace, saw Gary and Jan Gobi's names, and I'm sure in the coming months and years, I will learn other names as, and stories. But as we went round and round and round, in between waving to family members and volunteers, I gave thanks for the vision and generosity that created that place. It was a lovely testament to honoring those who have committed to creating a space of joy and welcome. And it continues to be a lovely testament to practicing generosity and servanthood. And that's what we try to do here. Practice generosity and servanthood so that each person might recognize their giftedness and their goodness in order to build up the body of Christ through those gifts. In this room and online, hello, we, we have apostles, we have evangelists, although some people don't really like that word, we're going we're gonna to reclaim it. We have prophets, we have pastors, and we have teachers in this room. Some of you will claim those titles and some of you will not, and that's okay because we know you're here. And we have apostles and evangelists and prophets and pastors and teachers who are part of the great cloud of witnesses in our lives who remind us to share good news in word and deed. And as I continue, we get to continue to get to know you all. We give thanks for the vision and commitment and generosity that makes this place, this church, what it is, that seeks to embody that unity in Christ, that seeks to share truth and love. In a few moments, here, okay, so here are the instructions. In a few moments, you will be invited to place your pledge cards and your regular gifts and offerings in our offering baskets. I'll confess, I literally just filled it out during the prelude. So if you don't have one, there's one back there. It's not too late. And I know, 
I know paper pledge cards are super old school, and we are in fact working on an online pledging and giving option. It's just not quite there yet. But there is something to the physical ritual of having something in the offering basket, having a gift to place in order to celebrate all that God has given us. It reminds us of the physical gifts that we are given and offer back to God. It's something that requires a tangible action, and you know what? I think it will please God. I asked Silas what his favorite part was, and he said opening presents on his birthday because, of course, what four-year-old wouldn't? And it's one of my favorite things to see that joy that comes from giving a gift. So we give thanks today for the commitments you offer for the sake of sharing the good news in these walls and beyond I give thanks for your commitments to care, your commitments to honor those who have taught you, your commitments to asking your own questions and continuing faith journeys, even as they differ from the faith of your childhood, because those are gifts. And we celebrate and we recognize those gifts as we continue the work of building up the body of Christ here at this church and around the world. Thanks be to God for the living saints in our lives who remind us of God's love for the world, who show us how to care for the communities of which we are a part, who accompany us through our grief and our doubts and our questions. And thanks be to God for the saints who have gone before us, who we remember in all the ways like the children's book mentioned when we laugh out loud, when we blow bubbles, when we ride a carousel, when we eat strawberries, when we walk on the beach, when we light candles. Thanks be to God for all the fruits of creation. Thanks be to God that we are able to share in harvests of time and talent and treasure. And thanks be to God that love has found each and every one of us. Amen and amen. Let us stand and sing.
I am honored to be here today on this Commitment Sunday to just reflect on the generosity of this church. We have so much within this, these walls, and we do so much outside of these walls. And this is such a great time to recognize the time that we do our yearly commitment, the time that we do our weekly commitment, and the time that we recognize the daily commitment we have to each other. There are so many things that we can be thankful for, the um, generations, or the um, generosity of gifts of, of meals that are given to people in need. There are the gifts of, of um, uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning up yards and singing and just a whole raft of things that we can be thankful for. And at this time, I ask the deacons to come forward or our ushers to come forward for the uh, taking your offering and your giving for this year and for this week and for these days. giving knows no ending. We know how to say thank you when we receive. Right now we say thank you as we give. In our giving, hear our heartfelt gratitude for all that you are and all that we have, and bless the other gifts we have to bring to your mission, opening our eyes to how you are calling us to participate. In Jesus' name, amen.
for all the promises and gifts for those who have died before us and given us gifts. We give thanks. We come to this table to remember the greatest gift of Jesus Christ who showed us how to live, who died and rose again for us. At this table, we come to share and remember the final meal with Jesus and his disciples. For on that night, before he died, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come to your table, we remember the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. May the bread and cup be for us a means of grace, drawing us closer to you and to one another. In his name we pray. Amen.
Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. sending out. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look on you with kindness and give you peace. And now may the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve our God, to love and serve our neighbor. For Jesus Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord indeed. Amen.